Hey, what's happening everyone? Pragmatic Addict here, yes. I am back home. It is July 8th. We got that incredible teaser this morning. And now we are back for another update. I am super excited to get into this. So last update we got, it ended with uh, an interesting cliffhanger. Kind of ended with maybe even like breaking the fourth wall a little bit where... The detective or whatever was asking the viewers of the website to email any questions that they had and then that would be the next update. I have <clears throat> no idea what we're going to be getting for getting ourselves in for especially in this episode because the movie does come out in just a couple days. I don't know if this is going to be the final one. I don't know <laughs> how far it's going to go but uh very excited to get into it regardless. All right so let's get to the bottom of it not literally because I don't want to spoil anything, but let's... Suspects investigation... Oh, alright! We're here! This is already off to a very interesting start. The investigation. Once the FBI took over the case in 1985, everything changed. Wait, 1985 didn't... Wasn't it going into like the 90s last we saw? <clears throat> let's see. Uh, 1992, yeah. Yeah, so we were already into the 90s. When... The FBI took over the case. That's right, because didn't they have to reopen the case because of, like, like uh, all the other detectives or something were no longer involved? So they had it, like, they had to hand it to uh, new people? 89. I'm trying to find 85 where they reopened the case. Yeah. Because, yeah, he was, he was gone for, like, 10 years. That's right. So this is, uh... Yeah, so this is while he was gone or so. Once the FBI took over the case in 1985, everything changed. For the first time, authorities decided to publicize the case. Ooh. The Bannister family murders generated intense public outrage. The FBI installed a telephone hotline exclusively devoted to the manhunt for the perpetrator. Anonymity was offered to any caller offering information, and a reward of $250,000 was offered for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the perpetrator. Although these, although these efforts resulted in numerous calls from the public, no credible suspect was located. Investigator, uh, investigators, investigators interrogated more than 900 people in relation to the Longlegs murder, yet the perpetrator of the homicides was never caught and the case remains unsolved to this day. It's like I said in my trailer reaction, guys. The movie is officially a sequel. Suspects, man, this is this is so new. I wonder if these people are going to be referenced in the movie. Because, I mean, obviously, not everyone that goes to see the movie is going to see this website. So, I wonder how far they're going to go. Over the years, dozens of potential suspects have been investigated by various law enforcement's, en enforcement agencies. Here are two of the more promising leads. Wayne Allen Stump, one individual considered a strong suspect in the Parsons murders, was a 26-year-old drifter named Wayne Allen Stump. Stump was a prolific serial offender who is known to have committed a minimum of four assaults of young girls between 1981 and 85. An in, in, itinerant, itinerant? Why well, can't read? Get out of here! <laughs> Handyman. He is known to have worked at locations close to the Parsons house. Moreover, he owned a white vehicle similar to the description to the vehicle observed by several eyewitnesses. The one with the brown, right, with the faux, uh, whatever it was called. Parked outside the Gaddis residence. Initially described by authorities as a person of interest in the Parsons murders, Stump was detained on October 3rd, 1985. With no physical evidence connecting him to any of the crimes, he was released a few days later. Well, I mean, if he's a prolific serial offender, either way, shouldn't he be, like, you know, incarcerated? Three weeks after the Parsons killings on October 14th, 1985, Stump attempted to abduct a teenage girl at gunpoint. He fled the scene when the girl refused to stop screaming. Wayne Allen Stump has since been officially ruled out as a suspect in the Long Legs murders. But, was he arrested? <clears throat> A suspect in the Bannister murders, oh sorry, Oral Wrench. Suspect in the Bannister murders is, a, is serial killer Oral Wrench 49 who at the time of the murders worked at an, as an ice cream vendor in the town of Rome, Oregon. 
course he was an ice cream vendor. Wrench had had relocated from Idaho to Oregon in the summer of 66. He was arrested for the murders of four little girls between 67 and 71. He was said to be obsessed with ciphers and codes, several of which were found on his person. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely not long legs. This guy is an embarrassing wannabe. Furthermore, he was known to be an avowed devil worshipper. He had even attempted to establish his own satanic cult along the Oregon coast on several locations throughout the 1960s and 70s. Wrench was never charged with the long legs murders, and he vehement, ve vehemently, uh, vehemently <laughs> denied any culpability in the homicides. He repeatedly attempted to have investigators officially clear him of suspicion. Of suspicion. In March 1991, okay, so now we're getting to the 90 to 1992 where we last saw. Following his release from prison, Wrench went missing and his trail went cold. He seemed to completely vanish off the face of the earth. Then, in late 92, Wrench's body was found lying face down in a culvert along Interstate 5, I-5, outside Portland. The cause of death was later ruled to be blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Wrench's assailant remains at large. So someone killed him. I wonder if it was long legs. Oral Wrench had has since been officially ruled out as a suspect in long legs murders. Connections and coincidences. A number of similarities between the crimes helped to establish long legs mo and possibly provide clues as to his or clues to, as to his identity. This is getting really interesting. Oh wait. Are these the questions that the email people like emailing asked? How is it you know as much as you know when none of this is public knowledge, Don Abraham? <laughs> I wonder. Readers call him. How is it you know as much as you know when none of this is public knowledge, Don Abraham? Good question, Don. I've been privileged with access to case files by a contact of mine in law enforcement. I have pulled what I can with my limited access. Is that what they're doing? Is that how they're how they're setting this up? That's kind of that's kind of fucking cool. All of these families are religious and they have little girls. None of the victims' families had boys. It seems they are targeted on their birthdays to snuff out life when it come when it continues to bloom. As far as why he stopped for a period of time, perhaps he was carefully selecting the next family. Maybe. He's not impulsive, he's very meticulous and calculating. Just my thoughts, George Steagall. <clears throat> Longlegs always selected families with darling daughters, but never sons. This is clearly a deliberate choice, but why? All the families were said to be happy and well-adjusted. None of the relationships were described as strained, and there was no record of restraining orders being sought out by any of the female victims against their husbands. These were not cases where years of abuse culminated, culminated in a violent end. Perhaps this man, Longlegs, convinced the fathers that they did not deserve or were not the actual biological fathers of their daughters. Though some very convincing means, or through some con very convincing means. I don't know about that. A compelling theory, certainly, but how? Longlegs appears to be an individual acting methodically, not a witch doctor. You, you raise a good question, one that stumped me and law enforcement for several years. Just wondering if maybe you think Longlegs could be more than one person. So, I hope not. I hope it's not that thing where it's like, oh, he, he like, runs a cult and all of his little, like, followers are doing all the murders for him. I feel like that would be a really cliche and just not, an like, the least anticlimactic thing in regards to, like, what this film is really selling and what I've been really hearing about it. So I don't think it's that. But also, they said that they never found any DNA. So, I don't know if, his little, if this was the case, if the little cult followers would be like that you know, slick and everything. I feel like this is just a long legs thing. Either that or it's something that has to do with, like, the devil itself. It's a question I often ask myself, Chelsea. Did long legs have accomplices, or did he act alone? What was the elderly wear home? Wait, who was the elderly wear home? Or the individual Jackson Smith spotted on the CCTV? I bet long legs in the name of a cult, and these murders were done by multiple unknown people. They just staged it to look like a family annihilator, Erica Torres. A satanic cult was one of the theories floated by local neighbors and police forces, but were never able to verify. A number of the families also seem to all to all be religious, specifically of a Catholic denomination. 
I didn't notice that. That, that that's that's interesting, Cache. Great catch, Cache. This is pe peculiar and possibly noteworthy in that of in that only 14% of Oregon residents self-identify as members of Roman Catholic Church. Huh. That is really interesting, especially considering that like it's hinting at like uh, satanic cults and everything. Maybe uh, those are those are like the people that he's targeting. God, what is up with my eye? It's all itchy. Why are there so many Catholic families? Could the killer be finding the families through a parish director directory? Good intuition, Kara. The FBI cross-referenced the parishes the fam the families belong to and couldn't find a link. It appears that law enforcement couldn't find any links between the families' churches. My question is, did any of the families have any common items in the home at the time? Ooh, like the uh, the weapons or whatever, or the shotgun. Luis Rodriguez. Great question, Luis. In nearly every case, a red toy piano belonged to the deceased little girls was found in the victim's home. That's really specific. A red toy piano? That's really specific. I have a friend who's hyper-fixated on psychology and insisted that I share this, share with you his suggestion that the long legs letters were written by each of the deceased fathers. Huh and that the handwriting on all of them was identical because all of these men were suffering from dissociative identity disorder, which can, among many other things, allow you to write in a script distinct form, distinct from your own handwriting when one of the other personalities takes control. He went on to propose that all of these men had long legs as their dominant alternate personality, who wrote these letters and then forced the men against their will to take knives and hammers to their own beloved wives and daughters. Absolutely compelling theory, although a bit of a, a bit of stretch that so many unrelated men could write an identical script, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, again, maybe if it's like they're being controlled in like some satanic sort of like ritualistic way, uh, that's that's what really ha has me like curious is like how it's all getting done and how it all seems so similar to the other murders. Do you think he came back for ritualistic purposes and do we have the names of the FBI investigators, Brandon McLaurin? I and investigators have mulled over this but can't seem to find any ties between the time Longlegs was absent of pre-existing occult rituals. The current head investigator is Agent Williams J. Carter or William J. Carter who took on the case from Chester Van Adder in 1985. Do you think there's a reason he seems to be targeting these families and young girls around their birthdays? Could there be a different victim he was obsessed with that fits the profile of these other girls? That's kind of like what I was wondering. Was like, what's with the birthdays? Wow, I never thought of this. Thank you for this fresh perspective, Chloe. What? <laughs> she asked you a question, brother. One of the read readers of this web journal wrote to say he heard a rumor that starched white fur, fur belonging to a cat or a rabbit was allegedly found at several of the crime scenes. I don't remember seeing that in any of the photos. Thanks, spook fingers. I've been following this case for years and I had no idea about this. Additional thanks to Benjamin Miller, a retired Oysterville police detective, for sending over the following VHS... The following VHS tape... <laughs> Are we getting a tape? In 1989, a suspect that apprehended matching the description of the suspicious individual near the Hesse murders and held for questioning, was, but was released shortly after due to lack of circumstantial evidence. Investigators attempted to trace the suspect, but quickly discovered he provided false identification. The provided footage is the only trace that remains of the suspect. Ooh, I'm getting excited. I have a few connections and coincidences of my own I'll raise below. Okay. Outside weapons was were never brought into the victim's houses. In the is instances where guns were used, the firearms were always legally registered to the fathers. So he also looked for fathers that already had guns. When knives were used, they were taken from the family's kitchens. In the single case where a hammer was used, it was taken from the family's toolbox. But why in that only case was the hammer used? Also of note, all of the bodies were found with the, within the victim's homes. None of the corpses were discarded or taken to the remote dump sites. If you have any information relating to this case, please feel free to contact me down below with more questions and theories. 
Okay. So, we're, oh, we're doing another two back in. Nice. A movie comes out July 12th. I wonder if, like, after the movie, the site's going to continue with, like, follow-ups to the movie. Like, how this serves as, like, a prologue, and then the movie comes in. Maybe after the movie, the site will continue as an epilogue. <laughs> fun. All right. And we've got another code. Super excited. I wonder if this is going to be the one where it shows, like, footage. All right. Backwards horseshoe, the dot, that's an A. Upside down T, C, L. That thing looks like a candy cane with a dot. Circle with a dot. This thing, little swoop, a dash. Horseshoe looking thing. Another dash and another A. All right, so we're gonna decipher this really quick. It's pretty short. All right, so the backwards horseshoe thing is an S. And then the dot is an A. Is this say your prayers? Upside down T. Nope. All right. So this is not say your prayers. N. So S A N. Uh, where's the C? <laughs> D. So sand. We've got sand so far. I think that looks like an L. O. Uh, candy cane looking thing. F. Sand of. Sand of something. Circle with a dot in the middle, T, and then a little swoopy guy, not this one, H. Sand of the, yeah, the dashes of the. So sand of the, three more letters, S, sand of the C. That was really quick, nice and easy one. All right, so sand of the C. Ah, oh, where are you? There it is. All right. So, sand of the sea. All right. Are we are we gonna be getting a uh, any footage? Okay. I hope I can. I hope I can get this one because it looks like we get we got another extra file. All right, man. It, it feels so good to do this after like a week of being gone. <laughs> Whoops. Let's see. Oh, that's the, is that, um, that is Hanby, or not Hanby, Hanby, uh, Baphomet or something. This is like a really classic demon. I've seen in a lot of movies. Okay, there's the shotgun. Or one of the shotguns, not the shotgun. But we've gotten a lot of photos like that. Okay. Nothing particularly new. Or next level as far as this update from other crime photos. Saw this one already in the last one. The devil. Oh, that's right. There was different like chapters. I think I think I'm gonna like put all these together. I'm gonna do that in this one. I was I was gonna do a separate episode after the whole website concludes, and I was just gonna go back through everything and piece everything together, which I still might. But I'm gonna do this here. This specific one. Uh, this one says the same thing. So I still haven't... Uh, about, about these gibberish looking ones. Someone in the comments said that like... You can do like... a de Go to like a decoding website. I don't know anything about that. You can send me the link to the code to, to the website to go to. And I can do it there. They're like, oh yeah, you gotta do like a... Like type in a code which is long legs. And do this whole fucking thing. It just seemed way too next level for me for someone that doesn't know anything about actually doing that, isn't really like smart with anything like techie. Just got into this because it's a horror film I really want to see. So I'm still learning the ropes here. You guys still got to help your boy out. But I, this one doesn't look, well, I'm not going to say it doesn't look as like gibberish. It looks better writing. It looks better writing. So I'm going to try and map this out so far and see if this makes sense. So the candy cane looking thing, there's two of them. Those were F, right? Sand of, yeah. So those were those are two Fs. What's in the middle of the F? That's a C. So that's a D. Yeah. So that's already F D F. So yeah, I, I I would have to uh, I would have to have someone if you can send me like a website or something, a link. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like this one. There's other pages that I was saying in the last one where I was like, yeah, I want to connect them everything. Go back. 
I'm gonna do that now real quick. Just because this looks like it's gonna be a rather shorter episode, like I've only been recording for like 20 minutes. Already got like the final file, which I am gonna save that for a for like a finale, because it looks like that might be footage. I don't know, we'll see. Where do I go to find the other ones? Is it downloads? It's downloads, right? Whoa, which one was it? <laughs> which one was it? What I what's funny is like I saved those pages to my computer too last time. Because I knew that this would happen. I don't know where they went. Ah! Shit. Hmm. Uh. I'm. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So this is the new one. Is this the old one? Okay. Is it this one? Ah, uh, where were they? This is the yellow looking. Nope, not that one. Is it this one? Contagious Magic, the soul. 187. No, not this one. Well, I don't know. The bottoms kind of look similar, but... Then it says 111? Whatever. 148. Chap. Chapter. So yeah, this is not... This doesn't look like the same one. What about this one? No, that's a code. What about this one? Ah! Wait, but still, those don't match, because that's that number, 38, and then, huh, what about this one? Damn it. Yeah, yeah, no, def definitely gonna go back to, to all this once the whole website is done, and then I will go from there and dig out everything. And none of these look like little book parts. What about this? No, it's a picture. Is this a picture too? Yeah, okay. Nope, sorry about that, guys. I was hoping that we'd have some more to read. But we do have one last thing to get into from the looks of it. So far, one last thing to get into. If we can get into it. Okay. So this is... Oh, this will probably be another T-Rex thingy. So let's see. Horseshoe. That's a horseshoe, and then it's the letter E, because I know the dashes. That's a new symbol, a circle with a slash. And then another E. <coughs> uh, and then a backwards C. And then an A. Look how I'm writing this. <laughs> I'm like, that much I know. It's not making it easier. This is actually making it more confusing. And then the thing, with, that thing, that was a, uh, can't remember what that was. The circle with the dot and then the two dots. So at least this is a very short one. <laughs> Will it be a T-Rex uh, lyrics? I don't know. Let's, let's see. Horseshoe thing. Going down this time, not sideways, is, where is it? R. So R, E, <clears throat> circle with a slash, V. R, E, V, E. Reverend? Is the backward C an R? No. Revelation. Revel... But there's only two more letters. Those two. So, revel, uh, revelate, maybe? No, there's no E at the end. <laughs> All right, so that's a T. What's that last one? What's that last letter? <laughs> I? Revelati. Revelati. Okay, so I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> We're gonna go to the file and see if that works. Uh... Oh, wait, 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 files. Yo, look at that. Hell yeah, I did save them. So hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. This is the one that we got today, right? Yeah. What's this one? Oh, wait, no, I already looked at these. God damn it. I need to stop thinking I'm smart. 
Well, <clears throat> I got the pages saved for if it ever comes at a time where I can connect them. I have them saved. So yeah, let's go to the file. Uh, downloads. Uh, this one. <laughs> Damn it. This one. Revelatory. Revelati. Revelati. Ah! Okay, is it a T-Rex thing? T-Rex band Revelati. Children of the Revolution. Hmm. Should I try that? Children of the Revolution. Children of the Revolution. No! Shit! Oh boy. This one's gonna be tough, I think. Uh, let's see, what if I type in Children of the Revolution? Does it have, like, lyrics? Song, but, yeah, okay. Lyrics. No, you won't fool the children of the revolution. <coughs> Alright, let's try this. Wait, is it doing that thing? Sorry, it's 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 been like a week since I've done this. Is it doing that thing where it says a message? Two five one nineteen twenty. That is. Let's see. Two was B. <coughs> Five is A B C D E. One is A. Nineteen. You know what? I'm gonna do something easier. Letters of the alphabet. Maybe this will this will help me out, so I don't have to count on my fucking fingers. Uh, yes. All right, this one right here. All right, so let's see. Uh, 19 is S, and 20 is T. Oh, it says beast. Where's my pen? I lost my pen because it's dark in here. Pen. Come on, don't be shy. So 15 and 6. That is 15. O. F. So beast of. We got beast of. Beast of what? 15, 21, 20. 15, 21, 20. No, 20. Beast of out. What does that mean? Beast of out. Beast of outer space. 1951. S. Beast of out C. Uh, and then 28.5. But it's twice. So 28.5. So T. H so beast of out C the <laughs> the beast out of C <laughs> this one shouldn't be too hard to guess but I'm gonna see if it's on here is there a beast there's no beast the beast out of C I'm gonna try that the beast no beast out of C Damn it! Out of the wait. Hmm. Let me try something real quick. T Rex band beast. Beast mode. The sea beasts. There's a song called the the beast. It looks like so. I'm gonna look up lyrics to that and see if it says anything with C in it. I see land. Get off my ass. Move, bitch. Artist T-Rex. <laughs> this is T-Rex. I don't know. It seems like the lyrics aren't that cool this time around. 
the sea beasts. Let me try that. Says a C. No. C. The sea beasts. The sea beasts go the waters. Where's out and of though? You are UFO. Huh, the sea beasts skull the waters, maybe? No. Hmm. This one's tricky. Beast of out sea the. The beast out of sea. That's the only one that makes sense. Out of sea. The sea beasts. The beast from the sea. Maybe that? Because it says Revelation. The beast from the sea? No? Two of these beasts, namely the sea beasts. Could the beast be rising? Could the beast rising out of the sea in Revelation? The sea beasts. And I don't want to go and type in all those lyrics because I don't want them to lead to anything. Like, I don't want me to be struggling with those so much like I did last time. Beast. Beast out of the sea. Beast out of the sea. Beast out of the sea. Damn it. Beast out of the sea. Hey, I literally just typed that in. The beast out of sea. The beast out of the sea. Yes! I did it! Whew. All right. Revelation 13. We got a lot to look through. Okay. This got really good all of a sudden. Okay. Is that the dad? The guy, the guy that... Well, I don't know. I feel like if that was the dad and he shot himself with a gun, we'd see more blood. As sick as that sounds. Like that. How did it get all all over the place? Okay, that's a duplicate. This is a long one. Damn it! Yeah, so about these, um someone told me that like how to convert it, but again I'm not tech savvy, so um maybe you guys can just tell me in the comments or I can look it up for myself what this actually shows. I'm wondering if this is footage. Is that footage? I'm going to be really upset if that's footage and I can't watch it. That is more of the thing that we got earlier. Definitely. This I'm saving. That ain't going anywhere. Belfagor. Is this all in Spanish? That's me. That's me too. Oh, Beezlebub. Okay. Alright, what's this one? I wish I could copy this and translate it to English. That looks like a witch though, or a wizard. Is that a shower curtain? Is that paint? I wonder what's up with this story. <sighs> Even though I'm not reading it, just seeing all the imagery, I'm like, yikes. Okay. 
That one's really blurry. Looks like a Polaroid photo. That's me. Creepy. <laughs> Whoa, this looks really realistic. Oh, that's that one photo we got because I remember this is what broke. I was saying like, oh yeah, I think that broke it. So that looks like a pool. Is this someone's house? Toilet there. What an odd angle to take the photo from and it's all dark too. I wonder like what the steps are that took place in this photo. Like how this photo played out. I'll read this one. The red. Oh, now I'm remembering the red piano. We kept getting duplicates of that photo in the last one. Transcend. Tran Transcendental magic. Should I keep this one open? Maybe I'll keep that one open because there was other pages that looked like that kind of color, that kind of tone. So I'll keep that open. Okay. Who's taking these photos? Again, one I can't get into. Yeah, the episode, there's going to be a bonus episode, I think, at the end of this, where I'm just going to go back and do everything. Okay. That'll be a fun one to get into. Hopefully, I, I mean, if I can do it. Oops. Greater is the power. Wait, that was 130. Oh, wait, no. Huh. Transcendental magic. There's transcendental magic, and then there's... What's this one? The soul. And then there was another one that had to do with magic. Damn it, click. Okay. E okay. Looks like another page. 132. Damn it, where's 133? Okay. The only reason why I'm not gonna like decipher all of this, at least right now, is because it doesn't lead anywhere other than just like cracking another thing that you can read. But, wait, what was that thing? It said Revelation 13. I wonder if this is, I mean, obviously the Bible has nothing to do with magic, I don't think. But, uh, maybe I'll look up that, and I'll read Revelations. What's this? The soul. Okay. We got one that was the soul. But I... What's this one? Introduction. What was this one? Or is that the one I just clicked? No. Hmm. Hmm. The soul. The one that we just read was the soul too. The one that we just opened. Was it this one? The soul. That's a 133 and 148. Hmm. Okay. Super sorry to those with OCD. Um, yeah, we're going to look into Revelations 13, though, really quickly. Revelations 13. The beast out of the sea. The dragon stood out stood on the shore of the sea and I saw a beast coming out of the sea it had ten horns and seven heads with ten corns on it, ten crowns on its horns this is what uh Micah was reading in the trailer actually and on each had it ha head a blasphemous name 
The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound, but the fatal wound had been healed. The whole world was filled with wonder and followed, and followed the beast. People worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast. And they also worshipped the beast and asked, Who is like the beast? Who can wage war against it? <laughs> beast out of the earth. Then I saw... Wait. So the thing that we're reading is the beast out of the sea. That's what we've been reading in this thing. I wonder if the, in the other one it's going to go to the beast out of, out of the earth. Beast was given a mouth to, upper proud, to utter proud words and blasphemous fla blasphemies and to exercise his authority for 42 months. <laughs> exercise all the authority of the first beast on his behalf. <laughs> I wonder what the whole... Like, I'm, I'm getting carried away, but like... But I wonder if this has something more up its sleeve. Like, the movie itself. It has something more with, like, real, uh, like, end times thing, thing stuff. Probably not because it takes place in, in the 90s. I'm just... What I'm saying is that I wonder what the overall message is in the movie. I wonder what it really all comes down to and what it really all has to say and what it really all has to show. But, uh, yeah, I think that might do it for this episode, guys. Um, it did say come back on the 15th, which is really interesting. I didn't know how much we would have left of this. But, yeah, it's, look, it's looking like even after the movie, we can continue. So, I wonder if after the movie, you know, it's, it's, it's going to continue as, like, an epilogue of sorts. But, uh, let's see. Go down a little bit. Okay, a lot of it. Okay. Tune back in Monday, July 15th. If you have any information relating to this case, please, please feel free to contact me with more questions and theories. So it looks like it's going to maybe go on to like more questions and everything that people have. <laughs> and maybe uh, maybe after the movie. I don't know. This is This is the most interesting one because this is the only time where... It's like cut off during the the release of the movie. Like all these have been leading up to the movie's release. So this is going to be really interesting to see what we get after July uh, 12th. But yes guys, with all that being said, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you guys as always for watching. I really enjoy doing these videos. Um, Again, uh, if it's not too much work, leave a link in the comments below as to how I can decipher those codes. And then again, after the movie and everything, I will come back. I will read all that stuff. I will... Convert all the files. I will do all the fucking coding uh, if I can. Yeah. But yes, guys, a lot of being said. Thank you guys as always for watching, and I will see you very soon in the next one. Take care.